Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder All Weather. In this update, we've got a series of disturbances that'll bring multiple storm chances over the coming days, along with a tropical wave that'll be impacting portions of the Southeast. Welcome back everyone, how's it going? Hope everyone had a, a fabulous weekend out there. I know I was able to kind of take advantage of some of the cooler conditions coming through my neck of the woods. So we got a lot of the backyard projects and some landscaping things that we're taking care of. But man, we got a lot to talk about this morning. So let's just kind of delve into the details. There are several areas that we want to highlight down here at this uh, water vapor imagery. You can follow along above my head, the time and date. But man, we had like a little disturbance that had actually formed out in the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, the National Hurricane Center had a 10% chance of this forming into a tropical storm. Luckily, it did not have enough time to form because it actually had a pretty good swirl associated with it. It actually, if it had another day or so, it probably could have formed into a tropical storm. It actually did bring about a 48 mile per hour wind gust to Pensacola, Florida. But this morning, it's bringing some heavier rains into the Florida Panhandle pulling in all that tropical moisture down here in the Gulf of Mexico, and that extends all the way into portions of the Southeast. At the same time, we have another disturbance that I wanna turn your attention to down here towards the Big Bend area into Texas. That's gonna be sending numerous uh, thunderstorms gonna be exploding into the afternoon hours. You can definitely see it on the water vapor imagery there. Look at that really kind of explode out here into uh, West Texas. That'll be pinwheeling across and bringing a wave, a kind of a squall line coming across and hitting all the major cities of San Antonio, Austin, into the Dallasworth Metroplex, through through Oklahoma and portions of Kansas there into the over, you know, later on today into the overnight hours uh, with that pretty deep uh, disturbance. And then we have another disturbance is going to be coming across into Tuesday, going to be impacting a lot of the same areas as well so let's take a look at the overall storm prediction center and they have highlighted several areas of a marginal risk out here in the southeast that's that's complements of that little low pressure system that's now inland but i'll be springing some heavier rain showers and some of those could bring some gustier winds into the florida panhandle as well as into portions of the southeast here but a little bit stronger disturbance like i showed you out here in the big bend area that has a little bit more instability to work with down here. And then as, as it extends further northward, it loses its instability. And but it still brings a pretty good chance of widespread rain and too much of Texas. And then tomorrow we have another disturbance is going to be coming across uh, from the northwest is going to be diving in ahead of a cold front. And as, as this the same time that warm front lifts further to the north. So now you're still going to be in the warm sector but pulling that instability further north, heading into North Texas, and that'll bring another squall line that'll be coming across into the afternoon hours, into the evening time frame. So let's take a look at these little disturbances on the vorticity view, because we do have down here this morning, you can actually kind of see the little low level swirl uh, out here in portions of the Southeast. That's bringing all that rain showers inland and pulling into that into that tropical moisture with that feed heading heading northeast at the same time we've got that little disturbance down here in the big bend area that's going to be pinwheeling across into uh, further east today bringing that kind of a squall line into much of uh, texas here and at the same time we have another little just short wave that's going to be impacting portions of the dakotas as well as into nebraska uh, for today and then as we get into tomorrow we still have that little tropical wave that's going to be sending pulses of energy into the southeast just kind of rain showers but we have a, a stronger disturbance that's going to be coming across in portions of the rockies that's going to really get to start getting its get its act together and dive down here into northwest uh, texas here and then as the warm front is going to be lifting further north throughout the day that's going to be putting you in the warm sector again and then that's going to be forming a pretty good squall line as we get into the evening time frame into the overnight hours again so you could actually have back-to-back -back nights of kind of restless sleep into a good chunk of uh, texas 
But let's look at the instability of your CAPE values, your convective available potential energy. Because, I mean, these storms aren't going to be terribly too bad, but they, are, they do have some instability uh, with them. So, yeah, we do have that kind of marginal risk of severe storms in portions of the southeast. We do have a little bit higher instability as we get into portions of Texas. You know, CAPE values of anywhere in the 1500, say almost in the 2000 range at times. And that's why we could have some of those, you know, increased slight risk for storms. Not really a tornado threat. I mean, it's more of a damaging wind threat into some of those could bring some larger hail, but not that significant. I mean, large consisting of probably quarter size at best uh, with these uh, storms, but mainly some strong gustier winds, but more importantly, some, some moderate to heavier rains where a good chunk of Texas definitely, definitely needs the rain. But as we extend into Tuesday, you can definitely see down here as uh, the, we have increased amounts of instability with that warm front lifting from the south to the north that puts you in the warm sector at ahead of another cold front that's going to be diving in from the northwest. And those could be a little bit more unstable. Uh, so we could be looking at more severe storms. That's why they do have that slight risk into a good chunk of Texas. Uh, going into that uh, Tuesday time frame with a pretty nasty squall line, I feel like that's going to be coming across into the late evening hours into the overnight uh, time frame. So let's take a look at the overall latest high resolution guidance uh, with that little disturbance uh, this morning. You can actually see it coming ashore into the over early morning hours down here in the into the Florida Panhandle with that little surface low that impacted that's pulling in some of that tropical moisture kind of a tropical feed into the florida panhandle into much of alabama there into into georgia that extends all the way into portions eastern portions of tennessee at the same time we've got that little disturbance down here in the big bend area that's really going to get its act together with that short wave further to the north up into south dakota and to nebraska bringing some rain showers for them but as that short wave really starts to pull uh, some of that energy, uh, it's really going to be kind of exploding out here into uh, West Texas, getting into that seven o'clock time frame. And that will extend into portions of, say, the San Antonio area into the Austin area there in the Texas panhandle and then form a really kind of a squall line into the overnight hours. This is this is one o'clock in the morning, you know, late, you know, late tonight into the overnight hours, one o'clock in the morning with a squall line with a good chunk of Texas into Oklahoma as well as into uh, Kansas as a little tropical little wave will be pulling that moisture further inland now into portions of Virginia as well as into portions of the Carolinas. Uh, but that will continue to pin well across into the overnight hours and keep you kind of a, a restless sleep and a good chunk of Texas there. But as we move through tomorrow time frame, we're going to be turning our attention all the way through the, to the north to the northwest. Well, we have another another little disturbance that's going to be coming across in portions of the Rockies. And then as the warm front lifts further north tomorrow, that's going to put much of this area back into the warm sector again at ahead of a cold front, right? And so out of ahead of a cold front, we could be looking at a kind of a nastier squall line really starting to get its act together into central Texas, into north Texas, going into the Oklahoma area, and that'll move through into, say, your midnight time frame, right? So you basically have two restless nights of uh, overnight you know, activity possibly and a good chunk of Texas to kind of keep you up with that storm threat, just that heavier rain kind of pounding the windows and that'll extend all the way into portions of Arkansas, heading into Missouri, into Southern Illinois by then, it'll eventually creep into portions of Western uh, Tennessee. But at ahead of that cold front on Wednesday, there's the instability, we'll pull further, further southeast so now the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted that slight risk for severe storms into much of the deep south into the Houston Metroplex and then a little bit lesser instability with the marginal risk extending into a good chunk of the southeast. This is ahead of a cold front. So let's take a look at the overall dew point. So this will kind of give you an idea of where the moisture is, but more importantly, where the cold front could be by the time we get into your midnight time frame on Tuesday. So but at you're ahead of it still in a good chunk of oklahoma and into, into good chunk of texas so that's going to put you on the warm side with those superior dew points uh, but you can definitely see where the dry line that drier air will be 
uh, pulling through into the overnight hours, by the time you wake up on Wednesday morning, I, I do feel it's going to be pulling through much of Dallas and much of Oklahoma there, but that'll extend all the way further north into Missouri, heading into Iowa, and as well as in the Ohio Valley. There, you're still in the, in the warm side ahead of that cold front, and that will just keep extending uh, further east as we go into your Tuesday uh, time frame, heading into your afternoon, into your late evening time frame, reaching all the way by the time we get into towards uh, Thursday evening, heading in all the way into portions of Alabama there. But let's take a look at the overall NAM. So this kind of gives you an idea at ahead of a cold front, right? So here's the setup by midnight. So the, you saw the dew points, right? So the dew points are going to be your near superior air mass. You're still going to have all the instability coming with the squall line through through the Metroplex into the midnight time frame through the Oklahoma City area ahead of it through into Missouri there with that it'll extend and that's why they have that slight risk for severe storms into portions of South Texas heading into Houston uh, with more unstable air coming into play into the afternoon hours but once that uh, cold front passes you you can definitely see what's happening behind you right nothing <laughs> nothing it's severe clear on the back side of this cold front but if you're out ahead of it you're still going to be in that superior air mass and dealing with those rain showers and those stronger storms until this passes and this will put you all the way through into your thursday evening time frame so let's take a look at the overall 500 uh, height anomalies uh, for today. So you can definitely see you're, you were in that warm sector yesterday. You dealt with all those record temperatures in much of the Southeast. That'll finally said goodbye. <laughs> so now you're gonna be on the cooler side with a little bit of instability coming in the midsection of the country with all the rain around. That's gonna bring the cooler conditions and the cooler anomalies for a good chunk of the central plains, at least for the first half of the week. But as we extend into your, say, Wednesday and your Thursday time frame out back behind that cold front, right, that's where you're going to have that ridging come back into play. And as it builds, the heat will build as well. So this will extend all the way through, eventually heading into the central plains again. And this will just expand as you head towards uh, your Memorial weekend with the trough lifting well to the north again, which we've seen time and time again with those much cooler conditions lifting further to the north and having that ridging uh, underneath. So let's take a look at the overall temperature anomalies because like I mentioned, you dealt with all that record heat from uh, yesterday, much, much of the 90s uh, off the East Coast going into your Sunday timeframe, but you finally could have said goodbye to all the all that record high temperatures as that those cooler conditions moved in. So yeah, we could be looking at some cooler conditions or at least for the first half of the work week for a good chunk of the country. But yes, there's the, there's the ridge gonna be building out west again as you get into the middle of the work week. Back into California, back into Nevada with those deep reds gonna be building and extending all the way through the central plains and then that just kind of expands, I think, as we get towards your Memorial Day weekend with those well above average temperature anomalies coming back into play for a good chunk, chunk of the country with the trough continuing to set and take a firm grip over the Pacific Northwest with those much cooler temperature anomalies. But let's take a look at the overall precipitation over the next uh, kind of five to six days through your work week. So as these series of disturbances that come across, unfortunately, they're not going to be impacting anything over much of California and much of the southwest here. But with the troughs further to the north, it still brings that instability well further north into the Pacific Northwest. But the main instability is going to be in the midsection of the country combined with that tropical wave pulling in pulses of energy throughout the week bringing some of those multi-inch multi -inch rains and a good chunk of the southeast and much of the central plains here. And then as you extend further north, a little bit of lighter amounts as you head towards the Ohio Valley into the northeast. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update where I protect you before and after the storm.